In October 2021, about 1,000 police officers attended a private police training conference in Atlantic City. What we found was really disturbing. I'm not talking about the guy who's in court. You're like, oh, I am not a citizen of the United States under Act 1206. Shut the up, right? I'm about to get pepper sprayed, tased, windows <laughs> broken out, mother. Welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer Channel. In this video, we are going to talk about this report that came out in New Jersey from the acting comptroller that looked into this private law enforcement training firm, training approximately 25,000 to 30,000 cops nationally on an annual basis. Well, they investigated this one particular course being taught, the Street Cop Conference in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Almost a thousand police officers showed up to be trained. And now, according to the Attorney General of New Jersey, all of these officers have to be retrained because there were problems. I've made it very clear to all 38,000 sworn officers and their leadership that no one should be attending street cop training. Before we get into the specifics of what they taught that was wrong, legally speaking, here's a few of the greatest hits from the conference. I don't want to hear exit. I don't want to fucking die like 91 with hookers and cocaine around me, you know? So we watched your, uh, watched your body cam videos. We don't think you got a voluntary consent. Yeah, here's seven pieces of case law, fuckhead. Stop trying to back the 19-year-old dispatcher. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you or let you know that I have a three-inch dick. I'm not the one with a one-inch dick. I watched this car come off the highway, and I, I fucked the shit out of the female driver. She doesn't want to fuck me back, though. And when I began to research the guys involved in teaching these cops... It's no wonder why they now have to be retrained. Look at this one in particular. This was something he said during this conference. In the South, it's the wild, wild, west, south, wherever. You don't believe me? Run from Georgia State Patrol. Run from me. Somewhere along the chase becomes <laughs> Neither confirm or deny there's some videos out there with me doing just that. Obviously, what is the first thing that I went and did when I heard him say that? I searched for the video. Check this out from just a few months ago. The first on the news at 6 o'clock, a reserve West Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's deputy who shot into the back of a fleeing car is facing charges tonight. Sean Pardazzi was fired in February, months after the initial incident took place. He's now facing charges of illegal discharge of a firearm and obstruction of justice. Vehicle in park. And what about the main dude? Well, I looked him up also, Dennis Benino. He's the one who said he was going to tase the guy for filming him. Shut the fuck up, right? I'm about to get pepper sprayed and fucking tased. Windows <laughs> broken out, motherfucker. Well, on Street Cop Training's website, he has this bio of himself, where he says that he worked in one of New Jersey's largest municipalities in 2005. He has received multiple awards, including, but not limited to, life-saving, Meritorious Service, Mayor's Award for Excellence in Public Service, several letters of recognition, leadership awards, and certificates of appreciation from several law enforcement organizations. And he now leads one of the fastest growing LEO education companies in the country. But CBS News had this headline about him. CBS New York investigates controversial police trainer was disciplined for alleged racial slur, other incidents. They ask, how did a former New Jersey police officer who was disciplined three times in a period of five years go on to train thousands of officers while charging local governments thousands of dollars? This is the same guy. CBS News discovered the founder of Street Cop, Dennis Benino, was a street cop himself in Woodbridge Township, New Jersey. Public records revealed Benino was disciplined by the department three times in five years. In 2015, three women accused him of using excessive force and racial bias. Woodbridge Township paid 50,000 taxpayer dollars to settle before it went to trial. Benino never admitted wrongdoing. Woodbridge police say he retired from the department at age 33, weeks after that lawsuit was filed. Then he went on to create street cops. So there's some of the background on likely why this training is problematic. But looking back at Mr. Benino's um, bio, he ends it by saying his personal mission is to ensure the safety of law enforcement personnel, citizens of the world, and to ensure police officers are well-versed in understanding and abiding by the Constitution of the United States. We investigated this six-day conference hosted by a private company called Street Cop Training. 
instructors taught unconstitutional policing practices, teaching officers to stop motorists without a lawful basis and to illegally prolong traffic stops. Have a day where you go out and go, I'm going to pull over 20 people in a row for the sole purpose of asking a series of questions and make up your own questions. Something as simple as, hey, how you doing? Where you coming from? You know, hey, where you going? Be real friendly about all stuff and just see how people answer questions. You will learn general baseline. So that was Officer Tommy Brooks of the Boston, Massachusetts Police Department explaining his methodology for stopping motorists. The only problem is, that's unconstitutional, what he's saying. He's going to stop just the first 20 cars. Police are not allowed to randomly stop people for no reason. They are also not allowed to stop a person or a car for arbitrary reasons or based on an inarticulate hunch or gut feeling that the driver or passenger might be engaged in criminal activity. Basic Constitutional Law 101. We've all seen the videos of Kenny Williams of him sitting in the driver's seat. He's finger fucking his computer, really just playing Tetris, not doing anything. And he's asking them very simple questions in the midst of you know, his, his investigation. Oh, so who's that in the car again? Oh, where'd you guys say you're going? You're going for a long time? I have family out that way. Making up a story and trying to engage them in a casual conversation. So that's Brad Gilmore of the Bergen County, New Jersey Prosecutor's Office advocating for prolonging motor vehicle stops in violation of the Fourth Amendment. During a vehicle stop, police officers are allowed to make ordinary inquiries incident to the stop, such as checking the driver's license, car registration, and insurance, and running a check for outstanding warrants. While making those inquiries, officers are allowed to ask questions of the driver and passenger, even if those questions are unrelated to the justification for pulling over the car in the first place but officers are not allowed to perform those in inquiries in a way that unreasonably prolongs the stop. Absent some other justification of further detention, once the mission of the stop is complete, whether it's issuing a ticket or a warning, the police officer must release the motorist to go on their way immediately. If the officer detains a motorist for any additional time in an effort to develop additional reasonable suspension to justify a search or further detention or to request a canine sniff, the stop becomes illegal, and all evidence obtained from that point forward, whether guns, drugs, or incriminating statements, likely will not be admissible in court. Again, basic constitutional law 101. In Indiana, speed limit for trucks is 65, ours is 70. There's no fucking way that any car should ever be behind a semi if they have the ability to pass it. So when you do that, if you're coming through Indiana, I'm gonna fucking stop your ass. Like he has the whole left lane to pass this fucking semi, but he's gonna sit right behind it, it makes zero sense, it's not logical. So that's instructor Kenny Williams, a sergeant with the Hobart Police Department in Indiana. And that was him, you could see in the last clip, unlawfully prolonging a stop by sitting a driver in the front of his patrol car and pretending to type on his laptop the entire time that he has the driver sitting next to him. But rather than conclude the stop at that point, Williams continued asking the motorist questions and then explained to the conference attendees that he ultimately found a large quantity of drugs in the car. However, on the fact shown, there was not a lawful basis for Instructor Williams to, prolo to prolong the stop at that point. By the way, somebody get that guy a lawyer. I mean, he's probably sitting in prison somewhere, and the police officer who arrested him has admitted to a thousand other cops and the internet that the entire stop was illegal, violation of the Fourth Amendment, and therefore the drugs that were seized in the vehicle should have been suppressed and he should not be sitting in prison. And here, Kenny Williams states that in Indiana, the speed limit for trucks is 65, but for cars it's 70. And in his opinion, there's no effing way that any car should be behind a semi if you have the ability to pass it. If you're coming through Indiana, I'm going to stop your ass all the effing time, even though you could be totally legit. In support of that point, William showed video footage where he pulled over a car that was driving behind a truck and committing absolutely no crime or traffic infraction. The video proves that. So he makes a stop and he documents it and he teaches it to other cops where he's literally violating the Fourth Amendment by pulling somebody over in the absence, complete absence of any reasonable suspicion that a crime or infraction has been committed. Again, basic constitutional law 101, not only being taught incorrectly or ignored, but um, teaching them to violate the Fourth Amendment. But wait, there's more. Now, some of this is less important than the constitutional law stuff, but you start to get a picture of why cops behave the way they do when you see how they act behind closed doors and how they teach each other. Remember, the audience 
is interacting with all of this very positively, as far as I can tell. They denigrated women and racial and ethnic minorities. I don't want to hear exit. I'm going to fucking die like 91 with hookers and cocaine around me, you know? <laughs> like, why wouldn't that be your goal and objective? Like, I'm in, like on vacation in Colombia, money and these girls like are not as wealthy and they need to do things to make money. <laughs> You're trying to get a little booty booty boo, nanny, boom tang, whatever the hell you call it, okay? There is an approach. You don't walk up and say, hi, what's your name? How old are you? Sounds like casting couch, doesn't it? <laughs> they promoted a warrior mentality and glorified violence. There's nothing else I'm good at. Uh, I love violence. I love fighting. I love shooting. And I fucking love freedom. It wasn't that long ago that we were drinking out of the schools of our enemies. Like, you know, like, I'm going to fucking murder this guy. Then I'm going to take his head. Then I'm going to cut his head in half. And then I'm going to boil his skull. And then I'm going to drink out of that skull. To be clear, what Tim Kennedy is saying could be perfectly appropriate to an audience of people training in MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or even high school kids on a football team. I really wouldn't even have a problem with that. But here we are talking about training police officers, agents of our government to interact with us American citizens. They belittled internal affairs. We get kicked in the dick one too many times. When we get in trouble by IA, when we lose our motivation and inspiration, I harped a lot on all the negativity. How many times I got kicked in the dick because they didn't want me to go out there and hit a trap. And they didn't want to hit money. They didn't want to hit me kilo. I hit 15 kilos. I hit 300,000. I'm still getting yelled at. I'm still getting yelled at. Somebody with some kind of fucking thing on their shoulders or neck collar or fucking whatever. Hey, we watched your, uh, watched your body cam videos. We don't think you got a voluntary consent. Yeah, here's seven pieces of case law, fuckhead. Stop trying to back a 19-year-old dispatcher. Get a fucking life. <laughs> They dehumanize civilians. You don't like treating Turks, right? You're like, ah, fuck them. The ambulance can take care of them, right? And I had a problem treating, you know, gangbangers and the people that were the pieces of shit of society, right? And I had a, a great mentor that told me, well, Sean, guess what? That's a live tissue lab, bro. But anytime you can come to the, one of these shitbags, absolutely do the best you can. Absolutely, because what if he gets hurt, right? Or she gets hurt, or he gets hurt. Then I can perform that flawlessly because now I've had some reps in. Everybody get that? Everybody with me on that? They made jokes about their genitalia and harassed members of the audience. All right, so normally in my class, we open up that beer tap and I just start spraying people with information. But today, you guys are just gonna get the tip. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't remind you or let you know that I have a three inch dick. I'm not the one with a one inch dick. I watched this car come off the highway and I, I fuck the shit out of the female driver. She doesn't want to fuck me back though. That's not an 18 year old kid dressed like Jesus coming eastbound out of Trenton. It's a 75 year old black man, a change in drive behavior, it came into a gas station and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And you know what, shame on me because I look in there and I'm like, oh, got a couple small rubber bands. And all I'm doing is asking, hey, what's up with that? And believe it or not, according to CBS News, while maybe not in New Jersey anymore, but in other states, apparently this training is continuing to happen. Street Cops website is promoting upcoming training across the country. Benino did not respond to CBS News for an interview request. He did post a video in response to the Comptroller report apologizing for the offensive language and denying that Street Cop ever taught unconstitutional policing. In fact, right there on their website, they are advertising this year's 2024 Street Cop Training Conference in Kissimmee, Florida, April 28th of this year. So just here in a few weeks. Look at this. Here's the cost per person, $699. Why so much? Well, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that taxpayer money is likely paying for this. As far as the guy saying that he hasn't taught anything unconstitutional, well, I will link below and put on the blog the actual report from the Comptroller's Office in New Jersey that goes into great detail, not only on what I've told you about here, but many more um, things that they've said that were blatantly wrong and unconstitutional. It's all laid out there with the case law. It's a uh, fascinating report, and you can go over it as much as you want. All they're going to do is just hide next time. They're, they're, they're going to make sure there's no video. They're going to suppress the course materials. But this, I predict, is going to be a treasure, a treasure trove of future civil rights litigation, both in criminal cases and in civil Section 1983 cases. We need to know 
which, which police officers have been to these seminars. Who taught there? Is there video? What was said? What were the course materials? This is going to be more important now than ever. If you have any additional footage from any of these seminars or know anything else about these instructors, now is the time to start compiling it and spread this footage. Everybody needs to know, the taxpayers need to know, um, not just in New Jersey, but elsewhere, because look at all the states that have paid taxpayer funds to pay for these courses. The taxpayers need to know that they're paying for these cops to go and denigrate them, to laugh at them, and to celebrate and teach each other how to violate your constitutional rights. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have a video you want to submit, please use the submission link below. Follow me on Twitter at John Bryan ESQ or on Facebook at the John H. Bryan Attorney at Law page. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it.